It's Mark from the United States. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening. Mark from the States. How are we doing today? I am doing fantastic. I hope you are as well. Thank you so much for coming. Uh, I wasn't so fantastic uh, a few days ago. Uh, as you know, got back from uh, my trip to Las Vegas, our annual trip there that we go over Labor Day weekend, and had a great time. Got home uh, Tuesday. Wednesday night, I came down with what I may believe it was the flu at the time. Uh, got violently sick, both ends, you know how that goes. But I started to, f after about 24 hours, I started to feel uh, different, better. Um, still felt, of course, the residuals of all the violent body problems that I was having. Uh, for that 24 hours, but uh, um, starting to think maybe it might have been food poisoning. Um, so I am way better today, obviously, and I'm just super, super happy to be back uh, with all of you. I missed all of you, and um, I just, uh, I'm glad that it's over with. So hopefully we can move forward. Um, today we're going to watch a video from, uh, Mark Felton. He is amazing. As you know, the links to his channel will be in this, dis uh, in the description below here, uh, to this video and to his channel. So please go support him. As we know, we like to support the creators, the original creators. It's really important that you do so. I don't, uh, I literally don't make any money from this channel now. And we can go into that some other time, but, um, these people do it and they, they make money from it. So it's important that we show them their support. They have given us their blessing to, to, uh, learn and see new and uh, interesting things and learn about the UK for me anyway. And hopefully I know some of you, uh, are able to, uh, learn some things as well. Um, but, uh, yeah, so get over there support him. It's real important, uh, that you do, um, but yeah, it's, it's crazy. And I just noticed, um, just in the kind of in the last three weeks, actually probably longer than that, you know, uh, I was cruising, uh, bringing, we were bringing more people into the channel family. Uh, I was like on my way, my goal was to get to 10,000 subscribers. I thought eh, that'd be really cool. What a cool milestone for our small channel. And uh, we got to about 98.50. And then all of a sudden, it just, that is about when I started really focusing in on <clears throat> uh, trying to get the permission of the people we're creating. Now, there's a few that will still do that, you know, uh, haven't responded, and, and but we, we still do their videos. And, and it's probably going to be okay if. We do, but, uh, you know, I'm still holding out hope. Hopefully that's someone uh, asking a question or talking, saying hello. Um, holding out hope that they will respond at some point. But uh, most of the people we uh, are going to learn from are, are, you know, okay with us doing it, at least verbally get, telling us so. And I notice how the subscribers start dropping. And... I mean, it was dropping fast, and it went from 98.50 to 98.40 to 98.30 and so on. Now, I, don't, I think I'm down to like 97.80 or so. I mean, it's crazy how many have dropped off. Now, there's probably a lot of people that those are legitimate unsubscribes where, uh, you know, people are like, yeah, this guy's boring or whatever. And that's fine. I'm, I'm totally fine with that. Um, but I think there's a lot going on with YouTube as well, uh, to where it just unsubscribes people. And especially, I think 10,000 is a pretty good, uh, it's a pretty big, um, you know, level, uh, to get to and, uh, achievement, at least for, <laughs> definitely for me. Um, and so I was kind of really excited. We were, we were inching our way there 
and now we've gone in the opposite direction. It's just so weird. Um, but you don't really, I mean, you don't realize it until you've been sick and gone, kind of combine those into an eight day, uh, deal where it just drops. It just, you just, and it made me think, my goodness, <clears throat> If people are using this as a career, they, they, these creators who use this as their source of income, it must be just terrifying if they were to get sick or had to, had a family emergency or whatever, and they couldn't do the videos because you have to constantly, constantly put videos out to stay on top of these things and to keep that revenue stream constant <clears throat> and then you have to up your game to even and then increase your viewership it's just you know from where i was before i i knew about it because i'd heard about other creators talking about it but i never realized until just this past week it was like my man if this was something i relied on um for my livelihood I, it would stress you out, you know, it's like walking around without insurance, uh, you know what I mean, if, if anything were to happen, because <clears throat> things just, you know, the channel viewership and numbers just tanks, and now I know that's because I haven't put anything out, so a lot of people aren't watching, that's fine, they're not going back and watching older stuff, I've taken a lot of stuff off as well, I'm going to be putting some of that back, by the way, um, but uh, now I'm, I think I, the way the YouTube works, I don't know if you know this, you have to make over a hundred dollars to even get paid. So if you make $99 in a month in ad revenue and other revenue, they keep it. They don't pay. So that once you start making, so if I made $100, they would pay you a hundred dollars. So, but if you made 99, they hold on to it. So you have to make at least a hundred dollars a month for them to pay you that money. <clears throat> I pay for the channel. Uh, I pay like 17 something a month. Uh, for, I think it's that I'd have to double check for like the VPN that I'll use on some videos to watch because they're not, I'm not able to see them here. Um, I pay, I don't know, 13 a month for the YouTube premium. So when I do see a video, I don't have to watch, uh, commercials, adverts. Um, and, and then there's just the time that I spend. So uh, really, I don't spend a lot to, and hence why I don't upgrade my equipment, you know? Um, but you can, so, but there's other people who pay for a video software and editor and other people, you know, their employees that help do the editing and, and maybe photography and so on and so forth, that they have to take all that into consideration. So a lot, yeah, there's a lot of pressure on these people to, to keep putting out content. Um, for me, not so much because, you know, I have a, a day job and this is just so I can, uh, have fun and hang out with my friends and uh, enjoy and learn something and have fun. But I, it really opened my eyes to, wow, it, there's, I could see why people get stressed on the, the quirks, I'll say, that YouTube will have in uh, dropping subscribers, which is a big thing you hear a lot. And I'm seeing it myself. Just my goal was just to get to 10,000. I thought, wow, what a cool, a cool uh, <clears throat> achievement. And uh, it just seems now we're dropping the other way. But not giving up. Um, I'm feeling better. So uh, we're going to get back on the, on the horse, as they say. <clears throat> as Anne would say, Princess Anne would definitely tell me to get back on that horse. And maybe throw in a, Maybe a, a naughty word in there, too, to get me motivated. At least I hope so. At least that's how I have it in my mind. That would be awesome. Um, but uh, I am just, it makes me really appreciate all of you. That's for dang sure.
dang sure. Okay, so I missed you a lot. So hopefully uh, I can get back into the swing of things. Uh, life has been real busy. <coughs> Excuse me. Hold on one second. Mm. <coughs> and then, of course, being sick, and it's just kind of pushed me behind at work. And so this following week is going to be busy as well, but I'm going to try to get steady on uh, being more consistent with videos uh, so I can see all of you, and uh, we'll do another live stream here uh, maybe next week and uh, see how everybody's doing. And uh, we can talk about uh, whatever, of course. Um, but I've gotten a lot of emails, as always, which is always a blessing from uh, hearing from all of you. It's just... It, it, I hope you realize how special you all are to me. So, anyway, come sit on this big fake couch. There'll be a timestamp. I'll put it so you can skip over the that talk, but um, there's something, there's a lot of things I want to do. It's just finding the time and the help to do it because it's hard to do by myself. You know, I don't have the equipment to sit and film myself. I, I would, I need to have someone volunteer, one of my friends. So, uh, but there's some things I want to show you and I think it'd be kind of cool. But anyway, come sit with me on this big fake couch and let's get into this video. It's all the Kings coaches. We did a video on a, uh, a walkthrough or a, uh, you know, like a, uh, walk along kind of a video. And, uh, we saw the Royal Muse at Buckingham Palace go by and, and I had this video queued up for a long time now and, and, uh, didn't really know it at first, but as I, saw the thumbnail for this video and saw briefly what it was. It's the carriage where the, all the carriages are and stuff like that. So uh, I, I always find those, they're like piece of pieces of art. So interesting to see. And uh, again, still planning on uh, coming to London. Uh, I know it's pretty crazy right now and it, as it is here. So definitely <laughs> it's not going to be until after my election. Um, and, uh, probably when things cool down and, uh, when my life here kind of simmers down a little bit, um, but we do, my wife even reminded me last night because we we're looking at places that we want to visit. She reminded me, he goes, but first we need to go to London. And I said, awesome. I'm so happy to hear that. Uh, so yes, we're still planning on doing that, but anyway. This is uh, All the King's Coaches, Royal Muse at Buckingham Palace. Let's get into it. So it's also like a... Well, hold on. Faithful viewers of this channel will recall a disastrous visit my wife and I yeah, paid to Buckingham Palace last summer. However, there is one redeeming feature to Buckingham Palace that I want to highlight today. I'm not talking about the exit. The place I'm referring to is the Royal Mews, where the King's ceremonial horses and I coaches are kept. A working stables beside the palace. Well, that was going to be my question. Is it a working... And I would probably wouldn't have said stables, but, you know... Is it working or is it just a museum where they're just housing everything or is it like a storage that you can go and see? But uh, it's work. It's a working stables. Great. The staff here are really excellent and friendly. The muse built at Buckingham Palace suggests the latest incarnation of royal muse that have existed at earlier palaces for hundreds of years. Opened in 1825, it has been in continuous use ever since. And as well as royal horses and coaches, royal cars are also kept here, ready for use by the king and his family. Oh, that is so cool. Some 30 horses are kept at the mews, depending on the time of year, together with state cars. And the royal coachmen, grooms, That's chauffeurs rich. and other staff can live on site in flats above the carriage houses and stable books. Oh. Wow. Some carriages are still in daily use, while others are only seen on special state occasions. Here are some of the collection's highlights. 
The semi-state Landau date from the reign of Queen Victoria, the Royal Muse housing several of these very practical vehicles. Oh, yeah. This type of coach, pulled by two pairs of horses, are often used for official or ceremonial duties. For example, newly appointed high commissioners in Commonwealth countries travel in a semi-state Landau when they present their credentials to the king at the palace. Oh, I have seen that. Queen Alexandra's state coach is one of the oldest in the Muse, built in 1865 and converted in 1893 for the then Princess of Wales, later Queen Alexandra, the Danish consort of King Edward VII. She used this carriage regularly until her death in 1925. Since 1962, the coach has been used to carry the Imperial State Crown, the Sword of State and the Cap of Maintenance during the procession accompanying the State Opening of Parliament. Of Parliament right. At this time, it has a I mounted it escort from the Household Cavalry and is saluted as if it is carrying a member of the Royal Family. The Irish State Coach was purchased by Queen Victoria and her husband Prince Albert in 1853, after it caught their attention at the Great Industrial Exhibition in Dublin. Queen Victoria used this coach often, in preference to the huge gold State Coach. More on that later. Holy moly! <laughs> on the top of the coach is a gold frieze added in 1876, when Victoria was proclaimed Empress of India including a palm of Indian, amongst a rose of England, a thistle of Scotland, and a shamrock of Ireland. Sadly, in 1911, during restoration work, a fire destroyed most of the oh, wooden body of this coach. No. It was rebuilt in a record 19 weeks and took part in the coronation procession of King George V. That is awful. Oh, what a bummer. But dang, gosh, isn't that fancy? Whew. There's, like I said, they're like works of art, you know? Um, and I'm pretty, I'm, I'm obviously, I'm amazed by how many different ones there are used for all these different events and for different people. And just, they don't look comfortable per se, but um, to ride in, but. Uh, I don't know. As far as I'm concerned, if I'm riding in one of them, life's probably pretty good. Um, so I don't know if I would complain too much about that. But, uh, yeah, pretty, pretty cool. The glass coach famously carried Lady Elizabeth Bowes Lyon to Westminster Abbey for her 1923 marriage to the Duke of York, later the King George VI. Coach. Queen Elizabeth II, then Princess Elizabeth, also used this coach to travel to her wedding ceremony to Prince Philip of Greece and Denmark. Oh, it is wow. called the glass coach due to glass being used in all the top panels and was originally acquired for the 1911 coronation of King George V. It is now used to carry royal brides to their weddings. Is that... Who is that? Should I know who that is? She looks familiar. Um, but looking at this reminds me of um, Princess Diana. And I, I, I'm sure... Uh, I Because that is, I think, one of the... Uh, because it was on TV everywhere at all times during that point. Uh, so you couldn't miss it. Um, and they didn't have as many channels to watch on TV as they do now, but um, every channel had it. And I remember the coaches and I remember I, as a, well, I don't remember the coach itself, but I do remember that there was a coach and it was uh, such a big deal. And, and uh, it was wonderful. And even though I wasn't really into it at the time, I was like, oh, gosh, you know. Um, but uh, which would be funny because now if there was a, something like that, I would totally be like, oh, this is cool. Probably be reacting to it. Um, but uh, speaking of Princess Diana, uh, Josh uh, from Strides and Rides, who does the walkthroughs and stuff that one of the channels we do, he, he reached out and is requested for us to watch one of his uh, ones he does on the royal estate or the estate or 
of Princess Diana. So I have that queued up. We're going to be watching that uh, this week. Uh, so stick around for that. That's kind of, I guess, an in, in video promotion, maybe, I guess. Anyway, pretty cool. The coach weighs one ton, and from the state opening of Parliament, it carries the ladies-in-waiting and the master of the horse, the ceremonial head of the Royal Muse. Yeah, I know, I've seen these. The Scottish state coach was built in 1830 and was purchased by Queen Mary, the consort of King George V in 1930, so it was already a hundred years old when it entered royal service. Wow. It became the Scottish state coach in 1968. That's with pretty the classic order of the right thistle there. insignia added to the side panels, this order of chivalry being the preeminent order in Scotland today. The Queen used this coach whilst visiting Scotland for official occasions, and it also figured in London processions. Famously, in 2016, for the Queen's 90th birthday celebrations at Windsor Castle. The Australian state coach is one of the most recent coaches added to the Royal Muse, built between 1986 really? and 88. Presented to the Queen in Canberra, Australia in 1988. A gift from the Australian people and partly funded by the Australian government, it is entirely built from Australian materials. Nice. The Queen often used it during the state opening of Parliament, and it carried the King and Queen Camilla, then of course known as the Prince of Wales and the Duchess of Cornwall, along with Catherine Middleton's parents. From Westminster Abbey to Buckingham Palace, following the wedding of Prince William and Catherine Middleton in 2011. Oh, cool. I wonder what they talked about <laughs> on that ride to and from. Uh, yeah, it's a cool looking... Yeah. I like it. I like that the I like the fact that since it came from Australia they used all Australian materials and stuff. That was pretty cool. Throwback to an earlier type of daily use carriage is King Edward the Seventh's town coach. <laughs> Before coach. the popularization of the car, the Royal Muse had several of these planar coaches, but all were disposed of in World War II except mm. this one. Placed in storage, it was restored in 1964 and given glass windows. At the state opening of Parliament, it carries the ceremonial maces. Huh. The newest coach is the Diamond Jubilee State Coach, again made in Australia and eventually arriving in Britain in 2014. Wow, it was yeah. most recently seen carrying the King and Queen to their coronation at Westminster Abbey in 2023. It Whoa, weighs two okay. and three quarter tons and has so electric windows, that. heating, hydraulic stabilizers, and air conditioning. What? The crown atop the roof. We're going back because I want to hear in it. In 2014, it was most recently seen carrying the king and queen to their coronation at Westminster Abbey in 2023. It weighs two and three quarter tons and has yeah. electric windows, heating, hydraulic stabilizers, and air conditioning. The crown atop the roof is carved from timber from Lord wow. Nelson's flagship HMS no Victor. Way. And timber segments from many royal buildings and vehicles are incorporated in the coach, including the Tower of London, Henry VIII's flagship, the Mary Rose, no. Balmoral Castle, St Paul's Cathedral, Windsor Castle, and the Stone of Schoon, used in coronations. And oh. even material from the Franklin Expedition to the Canadian Arctic, given by Canada, a Battle of Britain Spitfire, and a Dambusters Lancaster bomber, and even part of a musket ball from the Battle of Waterloo. My God! The door handles were made in New Zealand and contained 24 diamonds and 130 sapphires, this while the lamps were made in Edinburgh. A fortune. Perhaps the most famous coach is the big... That's not the most famous coach? Holy moly. That thing is incredible with all those... Uh, materials from all those famous and, uh, you know, just historical events and buildings and ships and, oh, wow. And it was built in Australia? Wow. They must be really good at building coaches. But that is, and door handles by New Zealand. Um, man. That is like the Rolls-Royce of, 
of the coaches right there. Dang. And I had, I do see, I, I mean, I did see it, obviously, because I watched the coronation with all of you. That's, that's wild. All right, so this is the most famous. Were made in Edinburgh. That's awesome. Perhaps the most famous coach is the biggest, the gold state coach that was last seen at the coronation of the king in 2023. It was commissioned by King George III in 1760 and delivered in 1762. Drawn by eight horses, it has Those a wooden frame covered in gold leaf with a velvet and silk interior, and it weighs an astonishing four tons. Oh my goodness, look It at has that. been used in the coronation of every British monarch, from William IV to Charles III. Yeah, I remember. Notoriously uncomfortable and possessed of a tendency to right. roll like a ship in high seas, Queen Elizabeth II famously described it as horrible and not very comfortable, and she didn't use it for her Diamond Jubilee journey at the age of 86. Oh, it must have been just awful to My personal favourite is this rather ordinary donkey barouche, which was used by Queen Victoria when she was old, using it on a holiday in the south of France and at Aww. Osborne House, her home on the Isle of Wight. I like donkeys a lot, and so I like the idea of a donkey pulling a queen. It was restored in 1962 and was used by the Queen at Windsor Castle, sometimes to give rides to her children, pulled by a Shetland pony. That's Since cool. 1843, a brougham like this is still used daily to carry the mail between Buckingham Palace and St. James's Palace, which I think is a very nice tradition indeed. Absolutely. It is a very useful vehicle, a brougham being smaller than the other coaches and able to turn very sharply. So I commend to you the Royal Mews, well worth a visit if you're ever in London. I am definitely going. And if you'd like to see more of the cars of the Royal Family, the Queen's former collection of Royal Vehicles is on display at Sandringham in Norfolk, and is also well worth a visit. And if you can't get there, I've made a video about that as well, link Ooh. in the end screen. Cool. Many thanks for watching, please subscribe and share, and also visit my audiobook channel, War Stories with Mark Felton. You can also help to support both of my channels at PayPal and Patreon. Details in the description box below. Please go and support Mark and his channel it, like we talked about earlier. And if you skipped over it, I'm going to just try to be brief. Go support him. It's important. Uh, he earns uh, revenue from all the, the views. and stuff. Just get over there and like uh, the video and, and maybe comment and subscribe if you haven't. He's really good. Uh, those were amazing. Absolutely amazing. Um, I had no idea. I knew the, uh, the Jubilee State Coach um, was upgraded. I had no idea it was upgraded with power windows, heating, uh, uh, air conditioning, you know, stabilizers. That's to make it a smooth ride. I, yeah, I maybe I. They mentioned it during the coronation. I do remember the big gold leafed one. Um, it is. Uh, it really is noticeable. Um, but yeah, it looks uncomfortable. In fact, a lot of them look uncomfortable to to ride in. But again. Your life, it's your life's pretty good if you're riding in one of those. And that's kind of how I look at it. But I'm look, of course, I'm saying it from the point of view that I'll never ride in one of. So, um, but yeah, they're works of art. Just all the detail. The just yeah, it's that was interesting. I definitely would love to visit. Yeah. I don't think I was maybe curious about it, but I don't know if I wanted to actually go. I actually do physically want to go see it, and I would love to see the cars too. We may watch that cars video. Um, so, Queen Elizabeth uh, private car collection. Maybe we'll, yeah, maybe we'll check that out. Um, I hope you enjoyed that. It was fun. Glad to be back. Don't know if I'll have another video today, but uh, um, as the NFL. Football, American football starts 
the first full weekend starts today. So, so excited. We love our American football here. College football yesterday. Love it. Love me. Love it. Love it. Um, but I won't bore you with that. Uh, I appreciate all of you. Thank you for hanging out with me. Um, if you are by chance just stumbling across this video of ours and go, why didn't I get notified or why? Just double check to make sure you're subscribed. If you haven't subscribed to, the, to our channel, please consider it. You don't have to. Um, I know it kind of messes with your algorithm and a lot of you have the algorithm the way that you want it and that I totally respect that. You know what? You are part of the channel family regardless. Um, I uh, just wanted to point that out in case uh, some of you were like, you know what? I haven't been able to see his videos in a while. But uh, who knows? Maybe the absence and then the video will make it pop up on some things. I don't know. I'm not a, uh, you know, big money channel. So I don't know how. I don't think YouTube promotes promotes our channel to others. But you know what? That's great. I am so happy to be with all of you. And uh, I hope you have a fantastic day. I hope everybody's happy, happy healthy, and safe. And we'll see you uh, either later today or tomorrow. That's, that's what I'm going to try. All right. Take care, everyone. Good to see you all. All right. Bye. Mark from the States. Mark from the States. It's Mark.